Hey, this is Jimmy with Six String Country. Welcome to the Real Working Nashville Bass Lines mini course. Um, today we're gonna be going over four tunes that I wrote uh, specifically for this course. Um, basically, these, these tunes are kind of like no frills, just to the basics of as far as bass lines go. A lot of the other courses I've done have kind of shown you like different licks or my favorite licks. Um, and so this time I thought I would just give you four songs that have different bass lines. Um, you know, the, the biggest thing that I've done here is I try to copy the kick drum as far as my, my pattern goes with the bass. So if the kick drum's doing bum, 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 I'm gonna do the same thing with the bass. So I tried to kind of uh, focus on keeping the bass and the kick drum together in all these, because it's kind of, a, it's a super important part of all music, really. On occasion, you'll go against it, uh, but it's just kind of because it's, need to do something different every now and again but for the most part the bass and the kick drum uh, are going to stay together so uh, these are just basic grooves and like i said uh you know there's a couple of licks here or there but nothing super hard so this could be considered a a good basic beginner's course for someone who's learning who just wants to learn uh, different bass lines that they could play uh like in a nashville session or a, a live scenario on a song where where you know there, there's no bass line there's no record and they're just like hey play bass to this um and that's what these these are for so um basically uh yeah i'm just going to start out with the first example we'll kind of work our way through that i'm going to show a little bit of technique stuff in that and then we'll just move on through the four examples and uh give you some um, amazing bass lines to add to your repertoire so let's get going all right, so this is our first example we're going to be going over today. And uh, like I said in the intro, uh, these are just songs that I wrote, recorded the parts, just so we kind of have uh, different feels in the verse, a different feel in the chorus, uh, for different patterns, uh, you know, ways that we can play the notes, etc. I just kind of tried to switch it up, but not get too hard, because at the end of the day, country bass is not about flash. It's just about holding down the root notes and playing with the kick drum. So try to do a lot of that. Uh, for this first tune, we are in drop D. So we take our E string, our low E string, down to a D. So it'd be an octave below our middle D there. Um, and basically, that's all we got, drop down to D. All the other strings are uh, standard tuning. And uh, what I'm gonna do is just kinda play through a section of the example for you. And then we'll go back through that same section, uh, note for note. And uh, before I get into playing this uh, first chorus here, because this song kind of starts out with the chorus, um, I'm just going to quickly go over a few technique things in case you haven't seen any of the other videos and this is your first uh, bass video you've ever watched. Um, so basically, uh, you might be playing a jazz bass, you might be playing a P bass, you might be playing a PJ like I have here, um, which basically has a P pickup uh, and then a jazz pickup over on the bridge. Um, I like this just because I can get a lot of different tones out of it, and but primarily when I'm playing even a jazz bass or a straight P bass, I keep my tone knob in the center. I like a nice blend of both the pickups. Uh, I feel like that's why they made it this way, because that's the best tone they could get out of it was that straight up and down. So unless I'm trying to get a, you know, like a jazzy tone, you can take it over to your bridge pickup and it'll give you more of a like, a more like kind of mid-rangey punchy sound. Um, and then in the center, nice mix, and then more of a rounded tone if you go to your neck pickup. And in this scenario, it's it's going just to a P pickup. So if you do go forward on this, you're getting just the P bass pickup and pretty much sounds just like a standard P bass would. Um, and you know, if you're not playing a Fender, obviously there's a bunch of different brands of basses out there. I would just say keep your tone knob straight up and down. If you wanna add some low end or some high end, if you have an active bass, this bass is also active. You can kind of tune in the tone to give it some nice low end warmth, um, which is a big part of you know modern country bass, especially is kind of getting those low end uh, harmonics that kind of come out when you boost the, the low end with an active bass. Um, but yeah, as far as, as playing technique goes, you know, on your right hand, you're going to want to have an anchor with your thumb. Um, some people anchor on the pickup. Uh, obviously, may, when you move down to these high strings, some people will anchor on the string too. Um, it just depends on how you learn what's comfortable to you. Um, the biggest thing is that you, you know, like I said, you have fluidity. You're able to move both these fingers. As you anchor there, and like I said, you can also anchor on the string. And um, 
with the left hand, a lot of your muting, so your rests in between notes are gonna be with your left hand. You're not really stopping the string with this hand, you're stopping it with your left hand. So you wanna make sure that anytime you're not playing a note that you let go of that note and you keep your fingers rested on there and that's gonna give you a mute sound or no sound basically, that way you can rest. So all I'm doing is off, off to cut that note off. Um, as far as what fingers you use, I use you just saw there, I'm kind of using a couple fingers. On the bass, strings are bigger than a guitar, so uh, you don't have to have perfect, you know, one finger per fret to go, you know, like you would on the guitar, because you got smaller spacing, smaller neck, and sometimes you need to use more than one finger to, to get that tone. So I'll, a lot of times I put my ring finger over my pinky finger, and I'm kind of pushing down with that to get that extra strength. And so a lot of times if I'm doing just like a, a two string skip, I'm still gonna use my pinky instead of my ring finger, just cause it, it just seems to, to be, the spacing just works better as far as the size of my hand goes, honestly, on the bass. So, um, I just kind of wanted to touch a little bit on that. Don't want to spend too much time on it, but just in case you hadn't played before, I wanted to show you just a few things uh, with technique. So now let's go ahead and get into this example. I'm going to play through the first chorus for you, and then we'll go through it note for note. Two, three, four. Alright, so let's go through the chorus now, note for note. Um, like I said, we're down to drop D tuning. So we're going to be hitting, uh, starting out on fret 5 on the low D. And uh, as you can see in the sheet music, we have a dotted 8th note, which is going to be like playing a 16th note and a 16th note rest. So it's like... Bah, bah. <coughs> Excuse me. Bah, bah. Open. And then 7. And then repeat it again, five, open, seven, five, open, seven, and then nine, seven, just quarter notes, and then back down to five, bah, bah, open, and then seven. All right, now we'll jump down to the verse. Um, this is slightly different where we have two eight notes and then a rest, followed by two eight notes and a rest, and it kind of continues through the verse that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and play through it for you, and then we'll go through it note for note. One, two, three, four. And that takes us back down into the chorus. So let's go through that verse now, note for note. Um, we're keeping practically with the same progression. Uh, we're just starting out on low D5. And we don't have the dots here, we just have eight notes. So it's just uh, uh, rest, open, rest, seven, rest, seven, seven, rest, five, five, rest, open, open, rest, seven, seven, rest, seven, seven, rest. Again, five, five, rest, open, open, rest, seven, seven, rest. And this time we go seven, seven, rest, seven. It's only an eighth note instead of a quarter note rest. So it's ba, ba, and seven up to A10. Sorry, A10. So 10, and then nine, and then 12. And then we slide from A12 to low D7 down there and then back up to 12a 
A12, and we slide 12, 14, 12, so. All right, and that's your verse. Um, the song has one chorus uh, as the outro, so I'm gonna go ahead and play that for you, and then we'll go through it note for note. Two, three, four. All right, so now let's go through that note for note. It's uh, practically identical to the first chorus, but just so we can make sure we got this down, we'll go over it one more time. So we're just on, it's just back to the eighth dotted and then the uh, the dotted quarter note after. So, bum, ba, D5, open, seven, seven, five, five, open, open. Seven, 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 seven. This time, five, five. Open, open. Seven, seven. Quarter note, nine, seven. Back to five, five. Open. Seven, 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 five. All right, so that's basically it. Make sure to check out the Jam Along track. It's got all the other instruments. It's up to tempo, and it's a great way to practice.